Okay, I believe I am alive. Okay. <clears throat> so I want to give some people a couple minutes to be on here. I'm going to post this because this is something that means a lot to me and I really want to get the information out today. Give me a quick second here. I gotta see if it's actually showing up that I'm live. Yay, there I am. I'll have to look at this. Hey, Sarah, I have to look at this. Okay, so y'all. I've got a story. It's a doozy. If you like drama, you're going to like this. If you love any type of stories and you feel your life has been a little uh, lately, um, tune in. This is going to be interesting. The good news that I can share is that Lydia may be on a roll and we're very proud of her. She she works very hard. Um, so I'm just going to go right in and jump straight onto this. When you believe your entire life one chain of events, you immerse yourself in that history it becomes your identity and then you find out that everything was a lie complete and utter fabrication let me just say tonight I'm breaking a generational curse and of course this would have to happen to me but it's okay because I, I mean I got cold chills right now but I feel like it is happening to me because awareness needs to be raised and life needs to change that's it so Welcome to Native American Heritage Month. When the month started, I viewed it one way. That I was going to get to honor my ancestors. See, my entire life I've been told that my father's grandmother, mom's mom, um, was Blackfoot Native American and that she had been unfortunately part of now please pay attention to the story I need a drink. because this just shows how messed up this whole thing is The story goes that she was a Blackfoot woman who had been put into slavery, that she had been bought, had a child with that man, and then after the baby was born, he returned her. And then... when she was purchased the second time he bought her freed her married her and then there was our line I have been telling this story my entire life because it's what I grew up as and it became a part of me like um, My father 
who has been gone almost a year, December 1st makes a year, did not know anything about his ancestry, and I had delved into it and started researching. And the final conversation that I had with Dad, he was on his way to the hospital, and of course this stuff is happening around the time where it's coming up on the anniversary of Dad's death. So there's that trauma as well. Again, this would only happen to me so that I can bring awareness to it. That's how I'm trying to view this. Dad didn't know anything about his ancestry, I guess. Uh, and, and I had only talked to Grandma Bessie a few times. And this was the story that she knew. This was the story she grew up as. So all of this stuff had happened to... You know my great-grandmother before my grandmother was born and it comes to find out my great-great-grandparents were liars they were fraud fraudulent um, colonizers and I will use that word because that is exactly what they did. Let me explain. <clears throat> Through before Dad passed away, a couple months leading up to it, um, we had talked about his ancestry, and he. Like I said, he didn't know anything, and he's like, why don't you look into it? I'm like, well, I had ancestry DNA done, and I had looked, and I couldn't figure out where, why it wasn't showing my native history. It was like, you know, it be coming from Mountain Midwest, because that's where, you know, like Montana, um, Canada area, that's where Bl Big Blackfoot is from. Um, so, like, literally the last conversation, I did find out for Dad, and I was able to tell him, Hey, Dad, you're a tutor! Because we descend from a cousin of King Henry VIII, on my father's side. So that was his father's father's side, not his mom's. Completely separate lines. Uh, there's a family crest for the Rowan side, and that's where I get my name for Rowan Temple of Light. Um, so, that side is not liars and fraud. I can at least say that. Alright, so, back to the story. Apparently, there is a thing, and unless you do your, your Native American history... You're not going to find it in any uh, history books. Damn sure not going to tell you about it in school. But there was something called the $5 Indian Act. And it was where it, the dolls, dolls rolls, D-A-W-S rolls, and what that was, was that's where they started registering um, the Native Americans to kind of, you know, okay, you're with this tribe. Okay, you're with this tribe. And, you know, before, you, they belonged to multiple tribes. Everybody, you know, intermingled. They were not freaking racist. <laughs> They had no problem working with other tribes. I mean, so of course there was, you know, an instance here and there that, uh, you know, they fought and stuff like that. And Blackfoots were kind of ruthless from what I did the history of. <clears throat> but I, I mirror, I, my whole identity. So now I'm going to go through an identity crisis for a little while. So you kind of may have to bear with me. But this is going to be good because I'm strong enough to overcome this. And I'm going to take you off a ride because I, as I grow and change, I really want you to be able to do it with me. So 
what some white people would do would be to pay under the table to these clerks that were writing, you know, writing down this information and taking, you know, this is how, you caught that I said Bigfoot instead of Blackfoot, ah, hook, you got me, you got me, um, now I completely lost track of what I was saying, but they, they, anyway, they would pay them underneath the table, um, to falsify documentation that they were Native American. Y'all, they were t pretending to be Native. You know why? Because the government was giving out benefits. And they thought, ooh, let me grab my share. Now, as far as my grandma Bessie... May she watch down over me and guide me. I do not believe for a second that she knew anything other than the lies that her parents told her. But I have family. And somebody, please, please reach out and tell my siblings that we are not native. My aunt that uh, is out there, you know, my uncle that's out there, please, somebody let them know that we have uncovered documentation um, of census, actually, of when Grandma Bessie was eight years old, um, that Grandma is listed as Guess what? White. Y'all, I'm as white as white can be. I may not act like it. And I view that as a good thing. Yes. Yes. This is why so many people claim indigenous heritage. Because they are told. Now, some were caught. And some had to pay back the money. But... Some were slipped through the cracks. And this is why I'm saying I'm breaking a generational curse. Because I feel like this is a veil. This is a lie. And it's not very often that you get the chance to do this. That you attain the information, the background information, that you need in your growth yes I have had the ancestry DNA testing um, this holiday uh, you know Christmas I'm gonna gift myself um, another one um, to kind of double check and back it up but um, I have revisited, and Ancestry DNA does update um, their statistics, I guess that's what you want to call them, um, periodically. As more and more people input into their database, they can update. So the Basque people uh, that are right there on the border of France and Spain, they have the highest concentration of A negative blood. I do not know where these people come from or anything like that, but that showed up on my chart so that I can, that did give me some insight as to where my blood type came from. Um, so I encourage everybody to do your own research, do your background. Um, actually, I would like to, I, I wish that I had the money to gift everybody, um, DNA testing. I just, because if you are going on any growth journey, that's right, I'm whiter than white bread as well. So, for, for me, um, and I can pull it up and show you. 
primarily England and Russia. Um, now, not to completely discredit any type of indigenous, but it's so distant and so minimal that it's not worth bringing up, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like it's, you know, I, I want to respect that tribe and not not try to claim when it's so far distant. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to right their wrongs. Um, <laughs> I am made for this. I mean, most of you all have been watching me the past couple of months go through this mental health meltdown and I feel like I kind of had to dip so that I could start lifting myself out in here um, strength enough strength so that I can handle this <laughs> um, so there one of two things either happened it, it, yes there's the alien theory with my a negative blood type as well i could also say that i am a demigoddess or a divine being because they call that the uh the rh negative divine blood somebody give me my crown no i'm just kidding that's not me, and y'all know that that's not me. Um, so, aliens. I'm all for aliens. Um, I like being different. I've never felt like I fit in. So, I truly feel like I'm here to bust through all of this and al allow the freedom. Now, so, like I said, one of two things happen. Either... They got busted, and they were like, oh, we need a little bit more information. Um, and whenever they couldn't provide it, and, you know, whenever my grandmother, you know, couldn't provide, you know. Because I'm not going to lie. I've had the fantasies, you know, because of my spiritual connection. <gasps> What if, you know, my great uncle was a shaman or what if, you know, like literally trying to place where my abilities come from. And, you know, I'm not bitter because I feel like I'm, I'm busting through this and sharing the knowledge with you as to what the white people did to indigenous people back in the day now it, it stopped in it it was stopped um after once they realized that people was you know doing this and, and it was detrimental not everybody was caught because there are um there are people that are still reaping those benefits today um that have absolutely none I'm sorry, but if you're, f I mean, now they probably don't even know it. This is one of America's best kept secrets. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> um, one of the white people's best kept secrets that of not completely telling all the stories of what they did to the indigenous people. Now, Wednesday night, I am traveling to the planetarium because they're doing the indigenous and the night skies. So the, they're telling stories, and what drew me to it was stories from the Blackfoot. Now, I am not about to stop honoring the Blackfoot people just because I have found out that I have no ties to them. I have been honoring their people
all my life. And I am not gonna stop now. Because I feel that they need my love and support. Even more. I may not have any ancestors there. But my love hasn't changed. And as it was pointed out to me, it's okay for me to do that. Because there is a difference between appropriation and appreciation. And I definitely appreciate them. And even though my gifts may not come from them, I have I felt that my connection that I have created, that I have built my entire life, kind of connects me to that. So, moon's out tonight. In case y'all didn't know, I got a full moon at the end of the week. So, I was kind of drawing down on her a little bit ago just to kind of help give me strength to get through this because I was afraid this was going to happen. Y'all know I'm emotional. I show it. I am I'm facing trauma. I'm facing an identity crisis. <laughs> Who among you is not right now? And I am calling... I am busting through this glass... To raise awareness and how to get things going. Sarah, if you are are free, I would love for you to go because I've got two seats available. I need somebody to go with me. You know, whenever I reverse rever little bit like that. When I reserved my seats, I reserved two seats. Nobody goes with me. I'm going to take Lydia and I'm going to use this as an educational opportunity. But yes, she made the honor roll. And in this being Indigenous Peoples Month and Thanksgiving and the ice packet that was sent home and the work that she has to do over Thanksgiving break, we're, we're going to dive into that. And she is going to be... <laughs> very knowledgeable about um, indigenous people whenever she goes back to school. She's going to have a story to tell. Now, with her, from her grandfather's side, um, it's supposed to be Cherokee. So, guess what I'm going to do? Lydia's going to get DNA tested. Because I want her, like, she's nine years old, but I feel that we have enough open conversations and we, we can communicate well. And honestly, whenever I'm learning things, she's learning them as well. She she wants to learn tarot cards, but it's I, I realize it's because she sees me it be such a big part of my life. Um, but she's give, giving interest, and anything that she is giving interest in, I am all for. Um, but as I told the teacher when I seen that, it, it, it was like you know, Here, here's this lesson you work on. I'm like, I've got this. <laughs> So, what I want you to take away is do your research. If you don't know and you have been practicing a certain, a certain way, like I, like I said, I'm still going to honor the people 
every Samhain, like I've always, always have. Um, I just get to honor them a new way. I feel like the positive thing is to look at this in a brighter light. Um, education and awareness is very important right now. And... Yeah, yeah, history is very whitewashed. So, um, please do do your own research. I mean, start with, I mean, a lot of people just started with the family Bible. And this is what I was going to tell you. The history that I do know, that I am aware of, is what came from uh, Mammal and Papal. Those were the ones that I was closest to. I wasn't close to my dad's side. Like I said, I was only around Grandma Bessie a couple of times. And, and all I'm going to say about my great-grandmother was she was very crafty. And... I took my spiritual name from her. Sorry, I'm having a tinge right here. So, that's going to change. So, not like many people know what my spiritual name is anyway. But, because I feel like I need to keep that private. But, that's going to change. Um... The history that I do know comes from German, Scottish, and like I said, the Rowan side comes from England and dates all the way up through to the Tudors. So the Rowan family is safe. The Rowan family is safe. Rowan Temple of Light is safe. There is no drama there. They are all on the good and, good and up. And I, you know, they... As, as far as I know, that way. Now, I never... Now, I'm not saying that it did not happen. But this is also something because... Um, sorry, I was reading the, reading, reading the comments and I, I clicked out. Um... Anyway, um, as far as I know, and I did not see any documentation of slavery, of anybody having any slaves, due to our history of the world, I am not going to say that that didn't happen, because that is a very good possibility. Um, I do know of one multiple great grandfather that did have um, a slave um, and he um, freed her. Um, it was a it was a she so he had freed her. Um, I do do have documentation on that but what I grew up as and taught, and it's about time, and I kind of feel <laughs> Grandma Donaldson and Mamma around me right now just kind of thin there. Really? Really? This is what you focused on? Have you forgotten everything that we talked about? Through Mamma and Papa's side, I have um, Scots, Irish, Scots Irish, German, um, German on on all sides. I mean, they come from Saxony, and and they they come over here. Um, Papal's side comes through Pennsylvania Dutch, so there's that as well. And his family were preachers, so I I feel that the sense of Spiritualism come from that, but and in his 
there's that side, and then Papal's mom was, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to straight call you nanny. I'm calling you out. You were an Appalachian folk witch. I'm just going to say. She was the one that everybody came and, and talked to for herbs and for, and she would go deliver babies. If someone was sick, she went to go take care of them. And uh, that is why, I got cold chills, they're here. <laughs> okay, I know I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, but... That is why there are multiple lines of my family being caregivers. And that's why I was drawn to go take care of people. And that is why I am, I've always done in-home caregiving. I have been doing things along that. Hi, Brianna. Um, so... Let me see if I can break this down. For those of you that are just joining me, I found out this week, over, well, over this weekend, that my entire identity that I have always known, the story that was told to my mother, because that's the story that was known, um, was that I, my great-grandmother was a uh, Blackfoot native. I found out that she was a big liar and um, her and her husband um, tried to fraud the government by um, saying that she was to uh, gain monetary value. Yeah. Pretty much. To, to, to gain benefits. Kind of like getting on welfare today, but you had to be native to do it. So... They, along with many, many other people throughout history, when God documents falsified so that, so that that could happen. So, there. But it's, I feel that my shift now, even though I'm still going to honor the, the Blackfoot, my shift is, and, and you'll start to see it, which I already do it anyway, is the Appalachian folk magic. I, I'm called more to it. This, these are... These mountains are my home, and I love them, and I, I, I really do take more of that side because that's where, that's what I was taught. I, and, you know, I, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for it. Um, for this change. Do, do I feel bad? Absolutely. It breaks my heart um, that we have lived in a society where still to this day people are pretending to be Native. So, in case you were wondering why at Halloween I was like, please be careful with what you are dressing up as. Do not dress in other people's cultures. Now I know why that was so important to me. I, I think deep down... I knew because I, I paid attention to the ancestry. So deep down, I knew, but I was like, oh, well, I mean, I knew it had something to do with documentation. But I thought that they were trying to cover up the fact that she was native. Because my, my family line, as far as I know, never re received any benefits. Otherwise, I would, I would have enough of that blood in me. I would be an ape um, to qualify for those benefits. Um, not that I would ever freaking do it. I'm just fine being the way that I am. But, so, I feel that it's more of a... They got busted. Um, 
I can't find any documentation prior to them kind of popping up in Missouri. Um, in Missouri is where my father was born. Um, so, cannot cannot really find any documentation. Um, I, I can say that, that, like, you know, Kentucky area and even some down under, like, Virginia and Roanoke area. Um, but not, not really too much more after that. Okay, so I've rambled on enough. If you take anything away from this, it is watch, and I'm going to say it again, and this may make people cringe, but the coloners of then, colonizers of then are still out there today. Stop appropriating, find out your own history, and appreciate others histories you can give respect and honor and not degrade not disgrace it is possible so here we go are you ready you know <laughs> ready for a new journey with me and and people around here are already doing it so, it's not like, you know, the people around here are delving into their ancestors. So, I'm going to be just popping into it and being like, this is what I know. I, I know I'm a healer. That's what I know. I, I know that I was put here to help guide people into their own healing and that's that's what I'm doing with these cards that's what I'm doing with energy and that's what I'm doing here and then here so thank you for your support find out what your heritage is I am going to go Wednesday night and I am going to honor the Blackfoot tribe and uh, show some love. So, good luck to y'all out there. I love you. And good night.